Hello, and welcome to another episode of Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom, where we examine the tiny secrets of good health that like to hide out in unexpected corners of nature. I'm Ethan Foster, the earnest fellow who is more likely to raise an eyebrow than raise his voice. And I'm Alara Sky, your local comedic contrarian who tends to throw well-timed verbal arrows at questionable health trends while praising the truly helpful ones. Today, we're talking about a quietly powerful amino acid that hides in your teacup. Apparently, it's the reason tea has been charming people across the globe for centuries. Doesn't that sound like an epic quest packed in a tea bag? Epic quest, indeed. Of course, I'm partial to the lazy approach to a quest, preferably one that involves a comfortable armchair and minimal dragon slaying. I understand we're diving into something called theanine. Theanine is found in exactly two natural sources, the tea plant, Camellia sinensis, and a rare mushroom that almost never shows up on dinner plates. Given mushrooms don't come in the standard tea box, we're mostly talking about those lovely leaves known as black, green, white, and oolong tea. Right. Nobody's raving about mushroom lattes with a side of calm and focus, at least not mainstream. So theanine is the quiet chemical behind that contradictory sense tea drinkers have, alert, but also chill. There's something borderline magical about feeling awake while simultaneously relaxing, and it seems this amino acid is the real puppet master. That's it. You can't quite put your finger on it. You take a sip of tea, you feel the mental clarity from caffeine, but you're not bouncing off the walls. People assume it's just that tea has less caffeine than coffee, but the real star is theanine. It modulates the caffeine effect, taming the jitters, and leaving you calmly alert. Like a guard dog wearing a cozy sweater. The guard dog is still doing its job, but it's infinitely more approachable. A bit of bark, less of a bite. I suppose that synergy explains why tea edges out coffee in worldwide popularity. Some people want more than just a caffeine jolt. Absolutely. And it's not just a fleeting sensation. Researchers have taken real people, though I always wonder who volunteers for these studies, strapped them to EEG machines, and looked at alpha brainwave activity. That's basically a measure of how smoothly engaged your brain is. The findings? Theanine increases alpha waves, which means people end up with that meditative, relaxed, but not zonked out state. Beta waves scream, work, hustle, worry, while alpha waves are, I'm wide awake, but I'm also good. So alpha waves are the brain's gentle hum, cruising along, not drowning in stress, not dozing off. They say if you took a quiet walk on the beach for 90 minutes, you'd see a similar result. But who has 90 minutes every day to find a beach? That's the brilliance. You can brew a cup of tea, let it steep, and get a dose of theanine that crosses the blood-brain barrier. Two cups of tea contain about 50 milligrams of theanine, which is enough to put your brain into that alpha wave zone. Sure, you can go for that scenic walk, but sometimes a kettle and a mug are more accessible. And presumably less sandy. Now, I've heard a lot of people talking about tea helping with anxiety or even mild depression. It's not going to stand in for professional treatments when situations are serious, but apparently folks are noticing a real difference. There's definitely anecdotal and clinical evidence. Some people with mild to moderate anxiety find that regular tea drinking, thanks to theanine and caffeine's tag team act, helps them calm down enough to prevent little stressors from morphing into meltdown territory. One woman mentioned how her husband, dealing with a depressive disorder, drinks tea and feels more positive. Another person with panic disorder and ADHD said it helps her slow down mentally. That's a pretty big range of experiences for one beverage. It's not just about calming anxiety. There's some evidence that theanine, especially when it's naturally combined with caffeine, helps sharpen cognitive function. A bit of mental clarity, better concentration. And apparently it can help keep blood pressure in check, especially during stressful moments. Isn't that a delightful two-for-one special? That's what I love about nature. You get caffeine for perkiness, theanine for calm focus, and who knows what else is swirling around those leaves. It's like a self-contained chemistry lab in the shape of a bright green leaf. Sometimes you hear about shade-grown green tea, like matcha and gyokuro. They say those have the highest levels of theanine, something to do with the tea plants being covered for a few weeks, so they produce more chlorophyll and up their theanine production. Exactly. Matcha can clock in around 46 milligrams of theanine per cup, which is pretty high. You compare that with standard black tea at around 24 milligrams, or regular green tea at around 8. Depending on how you brew it, you can get a generous dose. And let's not forget the taste factor. People talk about matcha's umami flavor. That's partly from the extra theanine. Good to know. I can't wait to casually mention umami mouthfeel at some tea party and see how that goes over. Yes, dear friend, it's quite umami thanks to the heightened theanine from shading the leaves. I'll win polite society points or possibly get no invitation next time. Either outcome can be considered a success, depending on your social life goals. Here's an interesting point. We can buy theanine supplements at the store, 100 milligrams per tablet or so, often used to promote relaxation or help with sleep. But many experts suggest the real magic is in the synergy with all the compounds in tea. Isolating just one element is rarely as potent as letting nature do its multi-compound dance. It's like an orchestra. You can't just pull out the violins and say, this is the best part, while ignoring the brass, woodwinds, and percussion. Sure, the violins might be lovely on their own, but the entire symphony is what makes the music. 
Tea leaves are basically master mixers. They are. People have been writing about tea for centuries, praising everything from its flavor to its mood-enhancing properties. Early Chinese philosophers practically created entire ceremonies around this. We might call them giant fans of alpha wave stimulation before we even had the science to name it. They definitely knew they felt good. What about the difference between herbal tea, or tisans as the purists call them, and real tea from the Camellia sinensis plant? Herbal teas, like chamomile, mint, rooibos, lack theanine because they're not from the tea plant. They can still be helpful in their own ways, but you won't get that theanine-driven alpha wave synergy. Only true tea has it, plus that bright combination with caffeine that you don't get in an herbal infusion. That's why we're specifically talking about black, green, white, and oolong. Another reason to bust out your fancy teapot. And let's talk about the mood-lifting effect. This is fascinating because it's not purely sedation. The theanine interacts with certain neurotransmitters that moderate stress responses, potentially making you feel more at ease and more positive, all at the same time. Right. Another reason tea is second only to water as the world's most popular beverage. People want that happy medium. Coffee can be a sledgehammer of stimulation, whereas tea gently taps you on the shoulder and whispers, wake up, dear, and also be serene. That's an appealing whisper. I also heard that the alpha wave effect can come on with just two cups, which is enough to measure on an EEG. If you want to do your own at-home test, I guess you could see if you can slip into a calm focus in the middle of a chaotic day. That might be your personal brainwave verification. Precisely. Not everyone's hooking themselves up to EEG machines in the living room, but we can do a subjective check. Do I feel calm and alert? Is my mind racing, or am I able to think more clearly? Speaking of clarifying, let's highlight the known perks succinctly. First, theanine can support cognitive function. Some research suggests that people who drink tea regularly have lower risks of cognitive decline. Second, there's blood pressure regulation. Third, reduced stress and an increase in mood. Fourth, enhanced mental alertness with fewer jitters than coffee. And fifth, improved attention span, especially for tasks that require sustained mental effort. That's a nice bullet list. And it's important to mention that it's not a cure-all. It's more like a companion. Many people like to incorporate it in their daily rituals, morning, midday, maybe an afternoon break. Tea's been used in traditional medicine for thousands of years. Sometimes those ancients were onto something, even without the lab coats. They definitely had fewer formal labs, but they had a keen sense of observation. If you brew a certain leaf and it helps you stay calm while you're forging swords or embroidering tapestries, you keep doing it, word gets around, and eventually you spark a global habit. Exactly. That's how humanity ended up with entire cultures built around tea. Ceremonies in Japan, afternoon tea in England, tea stalls in India, each place shaping an identity around that swirl of calm focus. Now we have the scientific breakdown, theanine, caffeine, alpha brainwaves. It's nice to see the tradition validated by research. And for those who still think it's just the caffeine talking, might I suggest they do a side-by-side -side test with coffee? Compare the feeling after a strong cup of coffee to a strong cup of matcha. Let's see if the wired but weirdly zen vibe shows up with coffee alone. I suspect it won't. That's absolutely correct. Without theanine, it's a different conversation. I do love coffee, but I also love not feeling like I could run a marathon when I haven't even put my shoes on. Theanine basically gives your brain the gift of alpha wave production, so you're not stuck in that caffeine-induced highway traffic known as beta wave overload. Speaking of traffic, there's also the advantage of not spiking your blood pressure if you're stressed. Theanine can help reduce that anxious surge. For a lot of folks, that's a game changer, because stress is a daily visitor, and controlling those surges is crucial for well-being. Which is why we see so many new tea companies focusing on high theanine blends or touting matcha as a superfood. It's not marketing hype if the substance is truly beneficial. There's a difference between buying a quality tea and grabbing a beverage loaded with sweeteners and artificial flavors. If the ratio is more sugar than tea, you lose some of the health benefits. Right, a matcha latte with four pumps of caramel swirl might not yield the same sense of calm, possibly euphoria from sugar, but that's another story. Now, about supplements, some folks prefer popping a theanine pill. They may even combine it with coffee or use it in the evening for relaxation. But as you said, the synergy of all the compounds in the whole leaf might be the real secret sauce. That's the consensus among many tea experts and health professionals. You can't just reduce nature's brilliance to a single factor. It's like reading only one chapter of a book. Sure, you get a slice of the story, but you miss the full arc. Tea has antioxidants, polyphenols, a little bit of caffeine, minerals, all working together. So, the real message is, if you want to give your brain a treat, consider sipping on some quality tea, especially shade-grown green teas, if you want a big theanine punch. Let the synergy do its thing. Let the alpha waves roll. Yes, let them roll. And perhaps do a bit of mindful observation while drinking it. Savor the aroma, the taste, the warmth. That's part of the experience, too, slowing down just enough to let the calming alertness settle in. The tea itself might be alpha wave friendly, but your environment can help too. Very true. So if you see me in the corner with a teacup, just let me be. I'm achieving enlightenment, or at least an approximation of it.
No 90-minute beach walk required. That's a relief. Indeed. And if our listeners find themselves drifting off to buy some matcha or gyokuro tea, we'll take full credit. We appreciate being your comedic gateway to a calmer mind. Comedic gateway to a calmer mind? That has a nice ring to it. Let's quickly recap the key takeaways before signing off. Theanine is a non-protein amino acid found primarily in tea leaves that increases alpha brainwave activity, thus promoting a calm yet alert state of mind. It pairs with caffeine to smooth out caffeine's jittery edges, which many find helpful for reducing stress, boosting focus, and potentially supporting long-term cognitive health. Precisely. High theanine teas include matcha and gyokuro, thanks to the shade growing process. Even regular black or green tea can provide a decent amount. Two cups generally supply around 50 milligrams of theanine, enough to see a measurable shift in brain waves. While theanine supplements exist, the synergy of the full tea leaf might provide broader benefits than the isolated compound. And that's the big brew in a nutshell. Perfect summary. Now, dear listeners, if you're intrigued, go explore some green or black teas. Notice if you feel that calm yet bright spark of focus. We can't promise you'll morph into a meditating monk, but a slight upgrade to your daily clarity never hurts. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us on Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom, where the smallest elements can make a mighty difference in your day-to-day -day life. This has been Alara Sky, encouraging everyone to find their alpha wave groove. And I'm Ethan Foster, quietly reminding you that sometimes all you need is a hot cup of tea to keep your mind both sharp and serene. May your tea leaves lead you to calmer horizons. Thanks for listening, and until next time, be well and stay curious.